Hi everyone, welcome to Johnny How To. So in this video, we're gonna cover something that's probably going to affect most people, and that is keying compressed video of some sort or another. Now, some of the examples here I have are older footage that's gonna be a lot more extreme, and some of it is getting gradually newer and newer. But the idea is going to hold true for all these examples. So I wanted to go through this because it's gonna be really, really helpful in getting good keen results even if you don't have a super expensive red camera or anything like that that shoots in 444 color. Kind of try to explain a little bit about that as we go through. So let's go and start off. So there's a few factors that's going to affect your keying quality. And the first one is resolution. So you can see this is 720 by 480 resolution. This was shot on a older DV camera and DV camera really compresses the color a lot. What I mean by that is if I go ahead and zoom in here and if I view the luminance, I just press Y for luminance. You can see that the shoulder on this guy right here is pretty clean. Now, if I view the red channel, see how this gets really blocky and kind of stair-steppy, and it, it looks kind of unnatural, especially you can see it on this shoulder right here. When you look at it in color and just regular, our eyes are very forgiving for, of color, but it's not quite as forgiving with luminance. So basically what people decided to do or figured out that they could do as far as having a good image without having to have a huge amount of data is you can throw away a good amount of color value, but as long as you keep all the luminous values, our eyes aren't going to notice the differences easily. So if I zoom in here and again, view the luminance with Y, I can see that I have a clean line here, a shoulder, but if I view the red channel, very stereoscopic green channel, very and then blue, not quite as noticeable here, but definitely uh, some stair stepping going on as well. So the problem with this is if we were just say you're filming something and you don't plan on doing any green screen or anything like that, you might be perfectly fine. But as soon as you start to do something like a green screen or a blue screen key, because the math is so precise between these keyers, as soon as I go ahead and uh, I, I selected the color picker for key light, control alt and left click. If I zoom in here, it becomes very obvious that this stair stepping is here in this footage. And that's because again, it's actually built into the footage. The, the keyer itself is doing its job. It's taking away the green or at least getting us started here, but it's just leaving behind this stair stepping because the footage is lacking that color detail. So let's go ahead and take a look if we have something that's a slightly better situation where we have some higher quality footage. Now this is uh, was shot with a DV camera as well, uh, but it was captured straight to the camera instead of tape and it's squished right now. You can see he looks ultra skinny here because this is actually 1920 by 1080 footage, but they used to squish it down to 1440 and then you would reformat it or unsquish it later on. But just as far as a keying example, we'll go ahead and just take a look at this as is. So I'm gonna go ahead and do a key light note on this as well. And let's go ahead and zoom in and make sure I'm double clicked on the right key light. Looks like I am. I'll go ahead and choose the uh, color picker here. I'll go ahead and do, uh, let's get where we can see his shoulders a little bit more right here and uh, maybe his hair up here as well. I'm not sure if that goes in better focus or not. There we go. Okay, so we have a better focus there. So I'll do Control Alt left click to start on the green screen. This definitely has some compression on it quite a bit. Uh, but if you view the alpha channel, you can see that we're get, kind of getting that same stair step in, but notice it's way less than in this footage here. And that is because the higher the resolution you shoot in, the more pixels you kind of have to make up the difference in that stair step in, especially if you happen to be down in this. So if we were shooting in 4K footage on a non-professional camera, but then downscaling the result to a 1920 by 1080 HD finished product, you might not notice the stair step in at all, even if you're dealing with compressed footage that might come off of a phone or a camera, a DSLR or anything, but a really super high-end camera, you still might get very good results but it still is gonna be harder to deal with even far beyond the helpful solution that I'm gonna show you here. So last but not least, and we'll get to this one later on, we have one that's much less compressed and you can see the quality of the green screen going up as we're going along here as well. So let's talk about this first shot and how we can get some better results with this. So uh, this guy, we, he kind of had his uh, hair up a little bit, so he was a good example to kind of take a look at this. I'll go ahead and set the length of the timeline to the input so I can see the entire length of this so we can kind of see that his hair with this regular key light on the DV footage is looking pretty crummy along the edges and then also we're getting this stair stepping very pronounced on his shoulder so what we're going to do is I'm going to keep this one on the side here for comparison later on but what we're going to do is we're basically going to have the computer split out the luminance which remember is nice and clean from any type of camera 
And then we're going to go ahead and separate that from the color values. And again, this is kind of aside from like say QuickTime compression that most of phones do or even DSLRs do, even if it's a nice DSLR where it kind of uh, compresses it as it's being captured the camera to save on space. But that can be useful for that as well. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a color space node. I'm gonna go ahead and plug that into our footage and I'll go ahead and view it. And by default, it doesn't do anything. It's inputting the linear color, which is what Nuke works in, and it's outputting linear color. So there's no change happening whatsoever. But what I wanna do is I'm gonna change it from linear, which is the regular image that we're seeing here. I'm gonna output it as YCBCR. And basically this is YUV, meaning the Y stands for luminance, and then the U and the V is our color values. It's just labeled differently here. So once I do that, the footage immediately goes Jimi Hendrix looking here, which looks really, really funky but it has done what I was kind of hoping it would do. Whereas if I look at the red channel, which has now been assigned again, think of it as the Y channel or just the luminance, we have a very clean luminance channel that has for every pixel value, if you draw a, say a four pixel grid here, every single pixel is going to have a luminance value. That's why we get this nice clean edge along his shoulder and the hair and everything else, aside from the resolution being a little bit low. I'm zoomed in 300% here. On the flip side, if I go ahead and view the green channel, which is the U channel, uh, which is part of the color, and I darken this down so it's easier to see, you can see we have very, very blocky edges here. And then if I view the blue channel, which is the V channel, again, the U and the V, YUV, the U and the V are the color values, you can see very, very easily, this is very, very blocky based on the DV and the compression that's happening to the footage. So the solution to this is, we're going to leave our luminance channel alone, the Y channel, but we're going to blur our U and V channels. So the way we can do that is I'm gonna go ahead and add a blur node. And the blur node doesn't know that we're in YUV color space right now. So I'm gonna go ahead and just choose RGB, but just remember the red is really the luminance, the Y channel, green is U and then blue is V. So I don't want to affect my luminance channel. So I'm gonna uncheck that. So I'm just gonna have it blur the green and the blue. And if I go ahead and view one of these channels just to make it easier, I'll go ahead and choose, uh, look at the blue channel just to make it a little bit easier to see. Basically you want to blur it more horizontally than you do vertically. And so in order to do that right now, those two are linked together. So, but if and under size, if I click on this two number right here, it's gonna split out width and height. So now you typically wanna do a four to one ratio or a three to one ratio, something like that. So if I blur this three pixels horizontally and then one pixel vertically, I can see that if I look at my red channel, nice and clean. Green channel been smoothed out a bit. So if I disable my blur with D for disable, you can see that it hasn't lost too much detail. You are gonna lose some detail, but the stair stepping is gone. And then the same thing goes for the blue channel where the stair stepping has definitely been reduced significantly. Now, the last step I need to do is right now, we're still in Jimi Hendrix looking space here, Purple Haze. We need to go back to our regular RGB. And the way we're gonna do that is we're gonna reverse what we did here. We went from linear to YCBCR, now we're gonna do the opposite. So I'm gonna go ahead and add another color space node. And I'm gonna go from YCBCR and back to linear. And this is where a lot of people mess up. Well, so the two gotchas that happen a lot is people accidentally assign the wrong ins and outs on these two nodes. Remember, you're going from linear to YCBCR, and then when you're done, you're going back from YCBCR to back to linear. And in the blur, sometimes people forget and blur all the channels, whereas you really only wanna blur just the green and the blue, and to get access to just those check boxes, you need to do the drop down and just choose RGB, and then you can choose individual channels. And again, the ratio is about four to one or three to one typically. And the amount of pixels you're gonna blur it is highly reliant upon the resolution of the footage. So what did this do for us? At a glance, if I press one here on the original footage and press two on the supposedly blurred footage and I go full screen and zoom in and I'm pressing back and forth to go between these two nodes, it doesn't look like anything has really changed. But if I zoom in really, really closely, and hopefully you can even see this with the YouTube compression, the colors are shifting slightly here. And maybe I can do a uh, wipe to make it a little bit easier to see. So here we go. Uh, yeah, so I'll go and zoom in here. And you can see as I move back and forth here, you can see that the color is changing as I do the wipe. So it's very minor when we look at it from our eyes, 
but to the computer, and if we look at individual color channels, you can see there is quite a difference happening, which is good. We're not losing a whole lot of detail, but we are smoothing out those kind of jagged edges. So with that being the case now, I'm just going to go ahead and copy and paste my key light here that I had already set up on the original footage and just plug it into our now kind of fixed or smoothened version of our green screen footage. So I'll go ahead and press one to view this. I'll press two to view the original and let's zoom in and look at our results. So while our key is obviously not done, we still have all kinds of green screen left over and there's some transparency probably in his interior. If I go ahead and zoom in and toggle between this input and this input, so here's this input and here's our original key light from the original footage. You can see there's a huge difference as far as the smoothness. And this is going to make it a lot easier for us to get good results in putting this footage on a new background. So from there, obviously you would want to go ahead and do all your different keys and refine it to get as good a result as you can. But now you're not doing this kind of losing battle of where you just can't fix this kind of rough edge you have. So just as another quick example on a couple other pieces of footage that I talked about, with the Get Smart footage or the uh, footage that we have here, since it's a higher resolution, the stair stepping isn't nearly as apparent, but if we look at his ear and some things like that, we do have a little bit of that. If we put him on the background at full resolution, we didn't notice the stair stepping, you probably wouldn't want to use this fix because remember this is going to lose detail, not a whole lot, but you only wanna use it when you actually need to. So again, just for comparison, I'm just gonna copy and paste the setup. So select those nodes, Control C, I'll Control V to paste them over here. I'll plug this in our original footage. Uh, because the footage is higher resolution, I might need to up the blur amounts, but let's go and see how they look from the get-go. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab my key light, copy and paste it, and we'll just compare the results straight out the gate. So here's the original. I'll zoom in really close so we can take a look, and we'll look around the hair especially. And then here is our two input, which is our smooth result. You can see it is getting a little bit smoother as far as the shoulder and the head. We may not need to use this solution on this and you really wouldn't be able to completely tell until you had it on the background, but it is something that can be useful. Maybe I even down this and I don't need to blur it as much. So if I go ahead and double click on this blur right here, let me go ahead and start at zero, zero. And I'll just up it slightly. So I'll just go one pixel. Not too much of a difference there. Two pixels, oh, let's make sure I'm looking at the right one. There we go, let's look at the wrong one. So let's see, so there's zero pixels in width, one, I'll use up arrow two. It looks like two starts to smooth it out pretty well. And then for height, height's not really making a whole lot of difference. So either I'll leave that on one or zero, but it's mostly the horizontal value that's gonna help us with this kind of keen compressed footage. All right, so that one definitely did make a difference, not as visible of a difference, but definitely one that can help us. So we can see we have a little bit more jagged edges and smooth that a little bit. And you can see like on, along his neck here, that kind of smooths out and fix that line in the original footage there. And then last but not least, let's look at as you up the camera quality and the green screen quality, what happens. So here's some footage here that is also uh, 1440 by 1080, but shot against a much better green screen. So this is actually probably the same camera but just a, a better setup, which obviously is going to make a huge difference. And if we go ahead and add a key light to this, and again, I'm just using key light, but you could use any key that you happen to want to use. I'll just do a quick key on this. You know, let's see if I can get a good starting point. And already you can just see by the quality of the camera, these, you know what, I think these are different cameras that shot the two of these, but just from the get-go, you can see how much smoother this is. If we look at our original one here that has low resolution and shot on DV, you can really just see how crummy of a key we get out the gate. We just have all this jaggedness and stair-steppy uh, type of look. Whereas if we jump a couple camera generations later and we view the alpha channel, we've upped the resolution, we've upped the the uh, color values, I think this might be a 422 camera. So for every four pixels, there's two color values. You're getting a much better and smoother result. So if we go and look at this, we still have a little bit of jaggedness. That might just be from the key and the spill on the screen, but overall we're getting a much better starting point. But just as a comparison, let's go ahead and copy and paste this stuff over here as well. Press L to line them up and condense them a little bit. 
I'll plug this into here and then copy and paste our key light and just see how this looks. So I'll go, here's our new version, here's our original version. And uh, since our resolution is a little bit higher, I'm maybe gonna go ahead and try three and one. And you might need to go higher or lower depending on the footage. Obviously, if you're using 4K footage, you have to use higher values. Uh, but let me go ahead and zoom in and see if we look at our off channel, if we get a smoother result. So here's with our fix, here's without our fix. And so it's pretty minimal, but you can see it is smoothing out a little bit. I would say with this footage, you might not even need it. But then again, I am looking here and you do see a little bit of that stair snapping. But at the same time, I am zoomed in 300%. So you have to kind of keep that in mind. Am I just viewing the pixels so close that that I'm going to see pixels no matter what, or is that from the actual keying itself? So if we look at it at 100%, you hardly notice a difference. So you may or may not choose to use it based on the footage, but if you're, say, you're using your smartphone, it's gonna compress it and throw away color. You're kind of getting a double negative in, in there. Even a DSLR camera that's a nice full-frame camera, even like, say, like a Canon 5D Mark III or the GH4s or anything like that that shoot really great footage but still don't capture raw video footage, you still might use these solutions in certain cases. So, again, hopefully you can kind of see the benefit of, of these in, in the particular cases, sometimes it's much more pronounced than others, but hopefully now you're a little bit better equipped to work with compressed footage and get good results in keying them. So thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next Johnny How To.